Ben-Hadad, king of Aram, mustered, I'm reading out of the NIV, mustered his entire army accompanied by 32 kings with their horses and chariots. And he went up and besieged Samaria and attacked it. He sent messengers to the city to Ahab, king of Israel, saying, this is what Ben-Hadad says, your silver and your gold are mine. And the best of your wives and children are mine. Now right here I need to say this. I, I, don't, I don't understand what I'm reading here. Because Ahab is the king of God's chosen people. He's the king of Israel. God has throughout history stood by Israel. Throughout history, God has protected Israel. Throughout history, God has blessed Israel and brought Israel through the worst of times and been with Israel through the lowest places in her history. So why does Ahab, Brother R.D., make a deal with the devil? Why does he give in without a fight? Why doesn't he see that Jehovah God is able? Somebody say, God is able. How many of you know that God is able? You, you fill in the blanks. There's nothing that God cannot do. He is able. But instead of standing in the face of a challenge, he answers, Ahab answers like someone who is already defeated. And the king of Israel answered in verse 4 and said, Just as you say, my lord, the king, I and all I have are yours. There's not a one of us in this building that would stand in the face of the devil and say, Everything I've got is yours. We know too much about the God we serve. We know too much about the Bible we read. We know too much about the songs we sing and about the goodness of God. But here's a king who is the king of Israel. And he answers out of his fear instead of his faith. And let me just tell you, when you let Satan bully you, he will intensify the pressure and attack you more. There's only one thing that bullies understand, and that's when you hit them right in the mouth, just as hard as you can. And you can't physically attack Satan, but you can attack Satan in the place that matters. And that's in your faith and not in your fear. Because the king of Israel said that. Satan intended to intensify what he was going to do against the children of Israel. And the messengers came again. He upped the ante. This is what Ben-Hadad says. I want to demand your silver now and your gold and your wives and your children. And about this time tomorrow, I am going to send, about this time tomorrow, I am going to send my officials to search your palace and the houses of your officials and they will seize everything you value and carry it away. If we give in to the devil, he's going to keep coming back to rob our lives and to pillage and plunder our faith. He will take our mind if he can. He will take our spirit if he can. He will take our possessions if he can. And in verse 7, the king of Israel summoned all the elders and said, Look how this man is looking for trouble. When he sent for my wives and my children, my silver and my gold, I didn't refuse him. And thank God there was enough people there who had the presence of mind to look at him and say, Ahab, don't listen to him and don't agree to his demands. I came to tell somebody in this building, don't make any deals with the devil and don't give him anything that is yours. Don't give him your house. Don't give him your money. Don't give him your morals. Don't give him your mind. Don't give him your affection and your love. Don't give him your faith and don't give him your soul because he's a liar and the father of lies. And if you give him just a little, he'll take everything that you have. Amen? 
And so verse 9, he replied to Ben-Hadad, Tell my lord the king, your servant will do all you demanded the first time, but this demand I cannot meet. Big mistake. Never give in. In fact, as I was writing this down, I felt a scripture come over me. I didn't put it in my notes. But the Bible says, resist the devil and he will flee from you. It's sad that many people don't believe there's a real devil. Oh, yeah, there's a real devil. Lucifer, Beelzebub, Lord of flies. He corrupts everything he touches. Everything he says is wrong and lies. The Bible says it's, and if the Bible says it, I believe it. Is anybody with me? And so this, this situation grew worse because he said, the first thing that you said, I'll do it, but I can't do what you're asking now. And Ben Hadad came back again and said, may the gods deal with me so severely if enough dust remains in Samaria to give each of my men a handful. In other words, I'm going to wipe you off the face of the earth. And don't you ever forget it. We don't preach. We call this shallow preaching anymore. But every home here better realize the devil wants to wipe your family off the face of the earth. You better understand he wants to take every ounce of your faith. You better understand he wants to plant the seed of fear so that you can't live a good life and a happy life. He, there are things that he has intentions for and purpose for. And I'm getting to where I'm going to preach. But meanwhile, now, now you, let, me, let me go ahead and tell you this before I get to that. This and that. I'm going to preach about this and that. Satan is good at threats. Huh? Anybody ever feel fear? And in the middle of that fear, there's a voice that speaks to you that's not normal. That's the voice of the enemy. He's good at threats. He's good at wielding the sword of fear. He is one who needs to be put in his place. And verse 12, Ben-Hadad heard this message while he and the kings were drinking in their tent and ordered his men prepare to attack. So they prepared to attack Israel. Meanwhile, a prophet came to Ahab and said, This is what the Lord says. Do you see this vast army out here that's threatening? Do you see these that have come to take your wives, your children, your silver, your gold, and going to take everything you have and destroy you from the face of the earth and not leave enough dust for each one of them to have a handful? Do you see all that? The Lord said, I'm going to give it into your hand today. And then when I do that work, you're going to know that I am the Lord. I wish we could get a little bit excited about the the word of the Lord today. Amen. If you can't believe God, who can you believe? If you don't believe God, what on earth happened? The devil is nothing but a liar. And I'm not trying to preach shallow here. I'm going somewhere with this. But I want you to notice how God handles the enemy. A totally different approach, Brother Fuller. Because some of the people asked, said, all right, and, 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 and Ahab asked, who's going to start this battle? And what the Lord said, say, it's up there. He asked the prophet. He asked, and the prophet answered, you will. <laughs> Somebody didn't get that. Who's going to start this battle? It's not going to be Ben Hadad. It's not going to be his thousands of chariots. It's not going to be his fearsome army. It's not going to be the soldiers that do his bidding. It's not going to be those with ill intent. It's not going to be the demons in hell. It's not going to be the devil. It's not going to be all the things we blame it on. I tell you who's going to start this battle. It's time for the church to stand up and say, we're not taking no more. We're going to start the battle. And the battle is going to start right here in the house of God. Come on, somebody. Amen. And God said, stop being on the defensive. This time, you're going to take it to the enemy. And this time, you're going to go on offense. So Ahab summoned the young officers and provincial commanders, 232 of them. And he assembled the rest of the Israelites, 7,000 of them. And they set out at noon while Ben-Hadad and the 32 kings allied with him were in their tents getting drunk. 
And so the young officers in verse 19 and provincial commanders marched out of the city with an army behind them, and each one of them struck down his opponent. And at that, the Arameans fled with Israelites in pursuit. But Ben-Hadad escaped on horseback with some of his horsemen. I obviously, I'm not going to go over every verse here, but get this story because I'm going to preach from it momentarily. You see, the battle wasn't over. And just because you send the devil packing one time doesn't mean he's not going to knock on your door again. Just because you won six months ago or one year ago doesn't mean he's not going to try again. Because he has something that I wish the church would get a hold of. And that is the determination to never give up and never stop trying. If the church would get a hold of that, we have the weapons of warfare that will destroy every attempt that comes against us in the name of the Lord. Amen. Afterward, the prophet came, verse 22, and he said, Strengthen your position. See what must be done. Because next spring, the king of Aram will attack you again. And it happened just like he said. The officials of the king of Aram advised him, and this is where I'm coming to preach to you. The officials of the king of Aram advised him, their gods are gods of the healed. Well, number one, they didn't have gods, plural. Hello? Israelites didn't have gods, plural. They only had one God, Jehovah God. Am I right? And so they were wrong already because they thought there was a plurality of gods on the behalf of Israel. But there was only one God, but he's the almighty God. He is the everlasting Father. He is the Prince of Peace. He is the wonderful, the Counselor, the mighty God. He is not just another God. He is the God of the universe. He's the Creator. He is the Creator of everything in this universe. And the Creator of every one of us us in this building. He's not just a one of many gods. He is the one true and living God. And there he was on the behalf of the children of Israel. But but Ben-Hadad said, their gods are gods of the hills. That's why they were too strong. But if we fight them in the plains, we'll be stronger than they. Here's my text. Took me a little while, but I'm there. The next spring, Ben-Hadad came with the Arameans and went to Aphek to fight. And when the Israelites were also mustered and given provisions, they marched out to meet them. And the Israelites camped opposite like two small flocks of goats while the Arameans covered the countryside. And the man of God came and told the king of Israel, this is what the Lord says, because the Arameans... Think that the Lord is a God of the hills and not a God of the valleys. I will deliver this vast army into your hands and you will know that I am the Lord. Mm -mm -mm. I've heard this preached a dozen times in my lifetime, but it excited me again for today because somebody in here has given up too easy. Somebody in here is not fighting with what you have in your hands. Listen to me carefully. Our God, we agree with Ben-Hadad on one point, And that is that our God is the God of the mountain. How many of you know him to be the God of the mountaintop experience? Let me just share with you a little bit. It was on Mount Sinai that God came down in sight of all the people. And the Bible said he came with lightning and with thunder and with a thick cloud. And his voice was exceedingly powerful as of a loud trumpet. And in Exodus 19 and 7, Moses brought the people out of the camp to meet with God. And the power of that meeting was so great that the whole mountain quaked. I've been in some services like that when the people come and God comes and there's an explosion of power because when you get God combined with the faith of men and women of God something has got to give amen and so the Bible tells me that he brought the people Moses did and the power was great when they met God and it was there on that mountain that he gave them direction that would shape their lives 
That's why I don't accept it when I see people living the way some people live. When I know they used to be carried out of churches so drunk on the Holy Ghost that they couldn't even speak English. Some of you may not know what that's about, but how many of you have seen that? When people were so full of the Holy Spirit, they had to take them home. That's what happens when the power of God gets loose in a life. So I'm not accepting that somebody that's walked away can't come back or somebody that's living beneath their privilege can't pray through again or somebody can't know God in the power of his resurrection. I'm tired of all this 2021 is different. Let me tell you what's not different. God is not different. He's the same yesterday and today and forever. Oh, hallelujah. If he could heal then, he can heal now. If he could win then, he can win now. If he could send power on a mountain then, he can send power to Mount Zion now in this hour. Somebody shout amen. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah. It was on Mount Horeb that the Lord spoke to his people and said, I'm going to send an angel before you to drive out the Canaanite, the Amorite, the Hittite, the Perizzite, the Hivite, the Jebusite, and I'm going to lead you to a land that flows with milk and honey. And the Lord said right there on Mount Horeb, I want you to repent before I do it. And there on that mountain, as they took the measures God required for them to repent, they did what he said. Go read that passage. They repented. And it was there on that mountain. Brother Fuller, I'm feeling Holy Ghost in my feet. Hallelujah. When people repented and got where God wanted them to be, the Bible said a glory cloud descended down over that mountain. And God began to talk with their preacher as he would talk to a friend face to face. But I want that kind of conversation with God. And I believe God can give that to us in the 21st century. Do you believe it? Shout amen. God, if you read that passage, says God turned again to Israel. Hallelujah. The word of God says God spoke to Moses on Mount Hor. Everybody say Mount Hor. When Edom refused passage to Israel and Israel turned away in her fear, the Lord began to speak in the middle of that cowardice and in the middle of that fear and turned around a great deliverance for the children of Israel. Don't listen to the voice of fear. Don't give in to the trend of the day. Don't flow with those that are of the multitude because greater is he that is in us than he that is in this world. And if we will simply call on the Lord in our own personal place of turning back, he will bring a mighty revival and loose it amongst the people of God in this hour. Yeah. Hallelujah. 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 He's, everybody say he's a God of the mountain. Brother James, he sent Aaron to Mount Hor to die. He sent Moses to Mount Debo to die. He buried Joshua in Mount Ephraim. He used Oath Nile to battle in Mount Lebanon against the Canaanites and Sidonians and gave Israel 40 years of rest in the middle of war. The Lord discomfited Sisera and gave the battle to Deborah and Barak at Mount Tabor. He gave the Midianite to Gideon's hand at Mount Gilead. He sent fire to consume Elijah's fear uh, uh, offering and prove himself God Almighty on the top of Mount Carmel. He had Solomon and build his temple on Mount Moriah. He called his church Mount Zion, which cannot be moved. And he went up to the mountains to pray. And he took his disciples to a mountain to reveal his glory. And the Bible says when he comes again, he's going to return and his feet are going to stand on the Mount of Olives. He is the God of the mountain. Somebody shout amen. Everybody say it with me. You're not preaching yet, but say he's the God of the mountains. Shout it at me. He's the God of mountains. I'm going to tell you, he's the God of the upper room experience. He's the God of revival days. I've seen people that folks said couldn't be saved. I've seen them saved. I've seen drunkards that couldn't help themselves be helped. 
I've seen dope addicts relieved of their addiction when people said they could never make a comeback. I have seen people living in the dark, dark dungeons of sin and bondage walk out of there and breathe the light of a Holy Ghost day when the Lord came. He is God in the day of miracles. He's God in the happy time. He's God in the good days. He's God when we're full of faith. He's God when we're strong in his spirit. He's God when we're sitting on the pews of a victory field church. And he's God when we're strong in the Holy Ghost. He's the one that provides all that. He's the one that gives all that. But Ben Hadad made a terrible mistake. He made a terrible mistake, a terrible assumption. He thought because he was the God of the mountain that he was not the God of the valley. The low place. Everybody say the low place. You talk about valleys anymore and people think that's something you sing about in a song. I'm talking about the low place. The low place. That he was not the God of the low place. That he could defeat God's children if, Brother Jack, he could lure them to a low place. Hello? That he could take away their victory if he could get them to go with him to a low place. Ben Hadad had over 130,000 soldiers and chariots and horses. He had a great and overwhelming army. He had an impossible, unfair, unequal situation there. And the Bible said they filled the countryside. The odds were against the, the children of Israel. The situation looked hopeless and their hearts had to be quaking with fear. And I'm sure there were those that wanted to give up. I'm sure there were people that said, we're defeated, let's quit. But suddenly the man of God spoke. And he said, the Syrians say our God is only God of the mountains and that he's not God in the low places. But I've come to tell you, he's the God of low places. And he will deliver you even in the lowest places the enemy attacks you in right now. And I know some people and you know some people in very low places. I'm preaching this knowing how hard it is to come back from any holiday. I know that. I'm a veteran preacher. I knew before we got here today that everybody's mind would be divided and scattered and it would be a challenge. But you know what? I'm going to plow ahead because I believe what I'm preaching. And that is that God is able to deliver to the uttermost. God is able to do much more than we could ever think. History says that it was a fixed principle of the ancients that each country had a deity. And when two countries fought, it was regarded as a struggle between the gods of each country to see which god was the strongest. And I want to tell you, Satan is the god of this world. People won't tell you that, but the proof is in the pudding. You can see it everywhere you turn. He's the God of this world. I also want to tell you that Jesus Christ is the God of the church. Amen? I still believe that Jesus Christ is God manifest in the flesh. I still believe that. And I want to tell you that Satan has an intention for every one of us. He wants to pull us. That's why preachers like me get up and struggle so hard and push so hard in, in hard days because Satan has an intention to pull people, homes, churches, and individuals to the lowest place he can bring them in their life. Some of you face stuff at home that if the rest of us knew it, it would cause us to weep for you. But you go on because that's your lot in life and you're dealing with it. But the devil wants to take people in their minds. There's people think thoughts that it would make us gasp if we knew the way the enemy fights against the mind. Well, let me just tell you right now, there's not anybody that ever hasn't been tempted, including Jesus Christ. He was tempted in every point like as we are. The key is yet without sin. 
You're going to be tempted and you can be tempted and you are being tempted. But there is a proven methodology that will give you the victory. I want to tell you that I don't care how low your mind goes. God is the God of the low place. God is the God that overcomes temptation. God is the God that brings victory when it seems impossible. And the enemy wants to bring you in your mind to a low place. He wants to bring your will to a low place. Hello? He wants to bring your spirit to a a low place. Because Satan likes to wage war in the middle of weakness and fear. That's why he only dared to come against Jesus Christ when he had been fasting for 40 days. He wanted to catch him at his weakness, weakest moment. But I'm going to tell you, the Prince of Peace is always equal to the occasion, whether it is a weak moment or a strong moment. He has power in this universe over everything that you and I know or can know. He is a God of the low place. And I want to tell you, like Ben Hadad, Satan has always thought that people could win. They were in the high places of life on the mountaintop experiences. But if I can just drag them down, if I can get them down, I've heard people say, Pastor, I'm kind of down right now. You know who's pulling you that way? The enemy of your soul pulls you that way. And there's a right formula for getting it right. You don't belong down, you belong up. You don't belong beneath, you belong above. You don't belong to be plucked up, you need to be planted. Hallelujah. I'm feeling the Holy Ghost talking to somebody right now. Don't you consider that it is the greatest reality because you're going home to something we don't know about. I came here to preach in spite of the devil. I want to challenge him right now and tell you, Satan, if you're listening in, I'm going to preach this morning. I don't care what you say or what you do, I'm going to preach to these people because the God that we serve is more than enough for any one of them who are going home to things that I don't even know. Hallelujah. If he could drag them down today, he would. He'll drag you down in your life. Somebody say amen. How many of you have had better life than you have today and you've had worse life than you have today? Hmm? This is not the worst day of your life. It's not the best day of your life. Every day is a good day when you live for God. But I'm trying to point out to you that he wants you to think that you get to the point of despair. I've been almost there before, have you? Have you almost been to the point of despair and then remembered who you serve? Remember what his name is? You remember to call that name in prayer? Satan wants to drag you down in your morals. He wants to drag you down in your habits. He wants to drag you down into a circle of weakness. He wants to drag you down because he doesn't think you can win in the low places. And you know what? In your flesh, you can't win in the low places. That's why people take their life. That's why people have problems they have and never get over them. That's the reason why people are in early graves and stress kills so many people is because the devil likes to take us to the lowest places to do his fighting. But I'm going to tell you, the Bible said, when I am weak then he is strong. Hallelujah. I don't care what's going on in my life. It's not affecting heaven. It's not affecting the throne room. It's not affecting the angels of God. It's not affecting God himself. And greater is the God that I serve than any weakness, any fear, any trial, any tribulation, anything that comes against me in this life. Our God is greater. Somebody say our God is greater. Satan has always thought that people couldn't do it in a low place. (laughs) Could I give you a little Bible? I'm almost through. Could I give you a little Bible right here? He thought Job would curse God and die in the low place of sickness and discouragement with his closest relationships failing him. It don't get any closer than your wife. Hmm? And she said, curse God and die. And he was real nice as far as I'm concerned. He said, you speak like a foolish woman. He could have spoken much stronger than that in my book. But the bottom line is that what he had with God was much stronger than even his closest relationship in life. Hello? What he had with God was greater than the boils that covered his body. 
What he had with God was greater than the losses that he suffered in his life. But Satan said, if I drag him down here, I, send, I put balls all over him. I cause his children to be taken away. I cause his possession to be taken away. If I can just get him, he'll curse God and he'll die. Don't you ever forget it. Every evil thing that comes against you has one intent, and that's to get you to curse God, blame God, and turn away from God. But don't you dare do that because when all you can do is barely lift a hand, you're going to feel another hand that's going to reach down and take hold of you because our God is greater in his, our weakness than we are in our strength. Somebody hear me? Mm-mm-mm-mm. God was in the low place. Everybody say God was in the low place. Brother Fuller, I kind of moved around in the desk. I don't do that often, but I did this morning. Because Satan thought Paul would backslide if he put his head on a chopping block. Huh? Now he'll recant. Let's see how strong he is with God now. And suddenly there was a voice ringing out. I've fought a good fight. I've finished the course. Better than all that, I've kept my faith. Hallelujah. I still believe him. I still hold on to him. I still love him. I go to church because I love him. I worship because I love him. I go and have my family anointed with oil because I believe in his healing power. I do what I do because greater is he that's in me than he that's in this world. And the God I serve is equal to anything that Satan can do against me and more. Hallelujah. I believe that when Paul put his head down on that chopping block, Satan thought he would recant in that low place. I'll tell you what else he thought. He thought that Daniel would throw away his prayer life in a lion's den. I can almost see the look. I preached one time many years ago when I was young and had lots of breath and could really go after it. I preached dare to be a Daniel. Dare to be a Daniel. Daniel walked in there, looked around, and said, huh, you, you think you're going to put me in here amidst these man-eating lions because I'm praying now? I'm fixing to pray three times more than what I'm praying right now. And the God that I serve is going to zip and lock the jaws of these lions. And the king's not going to sleep in his palace because of what he's done. But I'm going to lay my head down and I'm going to use the lion for a pillow. And I'm going sound to sleep because the God that I serve has got this in control because he's the God of the low place. He's the God of the lowest valley I've ever walked in, the greatest danger that I've ever had. That's the God that I serve. Mm-mm-mm-mm. He thought Daniel would give up. He thought Paul and Silas would quit singing their song and praising God if he put them in a prison cell and beat them half to death. Hello? But I'm going to tell you what. Don't ever let the devil take your song. I don't care if you can't carry a tune in a surf bucket. Sing your song. I don't care if you get off in the back of the house where nobody's around. Do it. Sing at the top of your lungs. Somebody was doing it yesterday. They wasn't singing Christmas song, but they're singing, I mean, the Christian song, just singing, they're singing at the top of their lungs yesterday. Don't let the devil take your song. Huh? Devil, you want to take my song? I'll sing another one and another one and another one. I'll sing all the way home from work. I'll sing all the way to work. I'll hum all day long at work, long as I don't get written up for it. And I'm going to come to church singing my song. And I'm going to go home singing my song. And you're not going to take the song out of my heart. But just because you put me in a prison cell and just because you beat me half to death in life, my God is still able and he's still willing to take care of me because he's the God of the low place. Uh, my, 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 my. Mm. He thought the Hebrews would bow down if he put, put them in the fire. Mm. Yeah, put them in the fire, they'll bow to our idols. But those three young guys, I emphasize that, Milton, young guys, three young guys, they looked and said, oh, king, if our God wants to deliver us, he can and he will. But if he doesn't, we're not going to bow down to your idol. We're not going to serve your gods. 
we're not going to go the direction you want. I wish somebody get that backbone like a saw log and a chin like a chunk of iron and tell the devil, is that all you got? Go ahead, hit me again because you're not going to take what I've got. What I've got, the devil didn't give it to me and the world can't take it away and nothing's going to stand between me and God. I've got my foot on the rock. My mind is made up. I'm going to heaven. I'm on my way. My name's written in the Lamb's Book of Life and there ain't nothing hell can do about it. And if you don't like this preaching, my Lord, what does it take to encourage you? I'm telling you the God of heaven is the God of your lowest place in your life. (laughs) Hallelujah. Mm. (laughs) Satan wants to fight you over heaven. Wants to fight over your soul. Drag you to the lowest place he can get you to. Huh? Yeah. He thought he had you, James, in that in that gang. Riding those motorcycles. Nothing wrong with riding motorcycles. I like to. But he thought you had you because of the surroundings, because of the culture, because of the lifestyle. He thought he had you. Yeah, he thought he had you, Dale, but he didn't have you. I could keep going. There's some of you that know where you were. You know how far gone you were. I was going down for the last time when suddenly somebody lifted me. Somebody picked me up. Somebody helped me. Somebody gave me a reason to wake up in the morning. Somebody gave me new breath in my body and life. Somebody found me when I couldn't go myself and put some ability in me to go another day. It's that God that I serve. His name is Jesus Christ. I'm feeling the Holy Ghost. I felt like I've been pulling a big old weight here today, but suddenly I feel God taking hold of that weight and saying, I'm going to pull it, preacher. Just go on and preach because there is the truth in what you're preaching that I am more than willing and ready and able to help my people in the lowest place of their life. Don't have any money. Stop worrying about it. God's got all the gold in the, in the hills and in the banks. Don't have good health in your body. Put it in the hands of God. He's a healer. Don't have any friends. I've been there when I felt that way. Put it in the hands of God. He's the best friend you could ever have. He's more than enough. He supplies all my needs. He's the El Shaddai. Hallelujah. Somebody shout amen. He sends somebody. Right now, the enemy has been sending somebody a message. I don't know. You know, we hide things from people because we don't want nobody to know how low we are. Hello? There's a reason why you're here hearing this today. Listen to me. He is, the enemy is sending you a message right now. He's saying, your silver is mine. And your gold is mine, and your spouse is mine, and your children is mine, and your health is mine, and your body is mine, your soul is mine, your lifestyle is mine. And if you think that's something, I'm coming tomorrow, and I'm going to look around in your house and take whatever I want. Hello? Hello? I'm coming for your family. I'm coming for your children. I'm after your job. I'm coming after your health, and I'm coming after your wealth, and I'm coming for your mind. And he thinks that we're going to wilt in the low places, give up in the low places. He thinks we'll be destroyed there. And he'll tell you, this is what he did them. He said, it won't do you any good to pray to your God because the odds are too far against you. Hmm? It won't do you any good to try. It won't do you any good to go higher. It won't do you any good to make a new start. You're a nobody. You've lost control of your life and the place that you find yourself at is only a down payment on what I'm going to do. When I get through, there won't be a handful of dust left. That's what the devil's trying to tell somebody. And he thinks you're not going to make it. God wants to fight for us in our is anybody getting this look I I knew when I walked up here you've heard this scripture before but then what scripture haven't we heard what I'm trying to tell somebody is don't forget it 
There's a God who wants to fight for you in the low places. We're going to go in just a moment. But in the valley, everybody say the valley. It was in the valley of Eshal that Israel saw walls, cities, and giants, and armies. And in that valley, their hearts were discouraged. And they refused to go into the promised land, Sister Grace, because of the valley of Eshal and what they saw. And the Bible said, I didn't understand this at first, now I do. The anger of the Lord was kindled. And for a minute I did a a back take and then I realized God was angry because he wanted to kill those giants for them. He wanted to break down those walls for them. He wanted to defeat those enemies for them. He wanted to do a lot of things that What? Okay, all right. Vicki, come up here right now. God wants to give us an object lesson. They're saying that Vicki has had a stroke. Could I get Brother Fuller and some of you? Huh? Oh, your mother has had a stroke today, right now, while we're having church. What a great time to pray. What a great time to pray. Vicky's up here weeping. Somebody come and anoint her with oil right now. Uh, this is just giving me another illustration of what God wants to do right now. Now, church, stand on your feet. Lift your hands. Reach out toward Vicky right now. Some of you ladies gather around Vicky. Amen. If it was your mom that they called about, you'd want us to pray and pray from the bottom of our hearts. In the name of Jesus Christ. I declare healing and victory. I declare right now the liberty, God, that only you can give. You are the God of the lowest moments of our life. And right now, I pray in Jesus' name. Vicki, throw your hands up to the Lord and surrender everything to him and give it to him right now. Amen. Give me your hand. Lift it up to the Lord right now. God, I surrender everything into your hand. I put it in your hands right now. I put it in your hands right now. Come on, church, I want you to pray in the name of the Lord, 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 in the name of the Lord. Ah, Jesus, go where that lady is right now and take her by the hand. Lord, lift her, lift her consciousness, lift her eyes toward you, God. Help her to believe you right now in the name of Jesus Christ, in the name of Jesus Christ. Come on, somebody. Come on, somebody. Let's clap our hands to the Lord. I feel the Holy Ghost in this house right now. Would you clap your hand to the Lord with me right now? Hallelujah. 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 God wants to heal. God wants to deliver. God wants to save. God wants to perform a miracle. God wants to do things for us that no other power can do greater than our lawyers and our doctors and the courts, uh, greater than, than worldly opinion. Our God is able. 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 Oh, come on. Clap your hands again. I feel like God wants to do something here. Hallelujah. 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 Hallelujah, hallelujah. In the valley of Agilon, the sun stood still and the moon stayed until the people of God had won. In the valley of Betharon, God discomfited the Amorites and cast stones from heaven and sent hailstones because God's people were fighting for their lives and God got involved in the war. In the valley of Jezreel, God rescued Gideon's army from 32,000 to 300. And in that valley with odds against them, God rescued them and gave them victory. In the valley of Elah, God helped a young man named David to destroy Goliath. In the valley of Rephaim, David waited on the sound of a moving in the mulberry trees. And God led him to destroy the Philistines. 
In, in another valley, David fought and slew 18,000 Syrians. In a valley, God made ditches of water look like blood, and the Moabites were destroyed. No wonder David said, Yay, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Mm, 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 mm. Now, I know I had to preach this for some reason today, and that may be one of them right there. Hallelujah. 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 He's the God of the low place. Isaiah 40 said, Every valley shall be exalted. Israel walked down the side of Mount Carmel to a place called Megiddo. And it's in that valley there's going to be a great war fault. But guess who is not having to worry about it? The people of God. The kingdom of God. Because he's the God of the low place.